the, tell us exactly how this uh, uh, will contribute from your point of view and from your experience to Tanzania uh, fertility care. I must say the three months I spent in India with my colleagues who are here today uh, was very, very useful because we had this opportunity to uh, be trained to help women who are infertile. Um, being a gynecologist, I was even more privileged because at least I had an idea of how best you can stimulate patients before you take them for IVF. And uh, the way it was structured, like you've seen in the video, uh, we had an opportunity to learn the anatomy and physiology. That was the first part. Uh, that was more of a theory part. And the second part, which took longer, and I think uh, the way it was uh, structured, that was the best thing that has been done to us was the fact that we spent more than more than eight, more than ten weeks uh, in embryology lab, uh, purely to get hands-on for uh, X conventional IVF handling of the sperms, um, and also dealing with the troubleshooting. Because in the end, I came to realize that if you don't know how to deal with the troubleshooting for uh, embryology lab, then you have nobody to help you. So the the way the uh, teachers that were being uh, teachers that were dedicated to teachers, the way they were trying to impart that knowledge, I think it was very, very, very fruitful. And in the end, um, I remember the last time that uh, we were just about to leave, we were given an opportunity to deal with several live cases. And I can tell you, you the, the feeling I had the first time I saw the first embryo that say I made maybe from the X that we did, it was a very, very, very good feeling. And the fact that we had a, another opportunity of uh, uh, getting a online training, that was uh, the registration that was done SRM. through the SRIM. And again, the quality control and quality assurance, which I think is the most important part of fertility treatment, was also covered in this uh, aspect of the training. So it was, it was a very good training program. Do you recommend it for every young doctor who wants to be specialized in fertility? Yeah, yeah. I, I think because we have a very huge need in Africa, um, three months training is an ideal training program that any, anyone who thinks that can venture in the field of infertility should be able to, to be a part. So I would recommend to anyone uh, who would love to be part of uh, a successful story that make have decided to take, uh, to, to apply for these kinds of training. And I think we'll definitely be able to help uh, our communities and especially women who are suffering from infertility. Thank you very much, Dr. Nicholas. Thank you. Uh, my uh, question now will go to uh, uh, Honorable uh, Minister of uh, Health of Chad. Um, and of course, uh, I know that uh, you're working very closely with Her Excellency First Lady of Chad and she's gracefully uh, uh, going to take Merck more than a mother as an ambassador and a champion to, to, to Chad. And of course, your, your, your role will be also to identify uh, candidates for training, not only for fertility, but also for oncology and cancer care. So can you tell us about your expectation or how you see this will contribute and how you will implement it and how fast? Merci, uh, Professor Rasha, and chers consoeurs parce que je suis pharmacienne aussi. Euh, je suis euh, très émue, il faut le dire. Je ne savais pas que ce jour-là, à l'Union africaine, quand vous vous êtes approché de la première dame du Tchad pour euh, déjà dire bonjour et ensuite euh, présenter la fondation Merck, je ne savais pas que derrière tout ça, il y avait une... Euh, si belle histoire qui euh, s'écrivait. Je voudrais profiter du micro qui, qui m'est offert pour euh, saluer les Premières Dames d'Afrique. Chères Premières Dames, euh, vous, êtes, vous avez commencé une histoire qui est en train de révolutionner en fait toute l'histoire du continent. Et permettez que je vous fasse une confidence. 
On était à l'Assemblée générale des Nations unies, la 72e session, quand le président Alpha Condé, président en exercice de l'Union africaine, a pris la parole, il présidait une séance, et que chaque champion, chaque chef d'État devait prendre la parole pour défendre une cause, j'étais émerveillée. Parce que ce n'était pas des simples déclarations politiques comme on, on les faisait hier. Mais vous sentiez en ces leaders africains l'engagement. L'engagement qui augure d'un nouvel avenir de, de l'Afrique. Et tous unanimes savent que eux, en première ligne, avec à côté leur première dame, peuvent faire bouger les lignes. Et la question des ressources humaines, je voudrais, euh, Racha, saluer le fait que la Fondation Merck mette un accent particulier sur les ressources humaines. Parce que toute action pérenne ne peut l'être que si nous garantissons les ressources humaines, on aura beau inventer les machines, mais toute action noble et pérenne se repose sur les ressources humaines. À ce propos, je voudrais d'ores et déjà vous dire que nous, nous avons besoin d'être renforcés, renforcer nos capacités, notamment dans la question de, 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 de l'infertilité, je ne reviens pas sur les exemples et la pertinence de l'action de Merck, parce que toutes les vidéos que nous avons vues ici ont été parlantes et ne peuvent laisser personne insensible. Et nous avons déjà un partenariat entre la Fondation Grand Cœur de Son Excellence, la Première Dame du Tchad, et le ministère de la Santé publique. La Première Dame du Tchad a des initiatives mais soyez rassurés que c'est en étroite collaboration que tout ce qui concerne la santé euh, se fait en concertation avec euh, le ministère de la Santé. Et je suis tout à fait à l'aise puisque ça fait des années que j'ai le privilège et la chance de côtoyer la Première Dame qui rêve pour le Tchad, mais rêve aussi pour tout le continent africain. Euh, Merck c'est le début d'une longue histoire qui s'écrit entre tous nos pays. Je ne parlerai pas du Tchad seulement, parce que l'union fait la force. Et quand nous regardons nos premières dames, comment, malgré leur agenda chargé, se préoccupent de toutes ces questions, notamment la question de la fertilité aujourd'hui, j'avoue que c'était une question qu'on n'osait pas évoquer en public. Mais... Euh, Aujourd'hui, avec Merck, le fait de l'évoquer en public va résoudre beaucoup de problèmes et rétablir les femmes qui n'ont pas la chance d'avoir des enfants dans leur dignité, parce que c'est bien, bien de ça qu'il s'agit. Je terminerai en vous racontant une petite histoire. Dans l'avion, l'hôtesse m'offre une rose et j'ai mis dans mon sac, j'aime les, les fleurs. Arrivée à destination, quand je l'ai sortie, elle était toute fanée. J'ai eu un pincement au cœur, mais on m'a appris qu'on peut mettre un peu d'eau et du sucre, et j'ai mis la rose dedans. Le matin, quand je me suis réveillée, les pétales se sont réouvertes. Et c'est un peu ça que Merck va faire avec le continent africain pour que chaque femme soit plus qu'une mère. Et merci encore de nous avoir associés à ce forum. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. It's a really touching story. Thank you very, very much. And uh, we will be the continuation of a long history of 350 years of Merck, and we will make history together in, in our countries, in our beautiful, beloved Africa. So um, my question will go now to the Minister of Health of uh, Central African Republic. You told me during our meeting uh, two days ago that you would like to have men also a champion 
and ambassadors for Merck more than a mother because they actually feel passionate about it and they can encourage their fellow men to, uh, to pursue suit. So, uh, and also you, you told me about the, the program of uh, uh, cancer access program and uh, the oncology fellowship program and how this will uh, help very much in Central African Republic. Uh, can you please elaborate for our audience because they were not with us, so I want you to, to tell them. <laughs> Merci beaucoup, Dr. Racha, avec tout le respect que j'ai pour et l'admiration que j'ai pour pour vous, pour votre engagement, pour votre passion. Avant de répondre à vos questions, j'aimerais d'abord répondre, dire quelque chose au niveau du au nom du gouvernement, du président de la République, le professeur. Faustin Archange Douadera, que je représente ici en tant que membre du gouvernement, pour dire un grand merci. Un grand merci à la Fondation Merck, parce que le partenariat qui s'est établi entre la Fondation Cri du Cœur de Madame Brigitte Douadera et Merck, pour nous, est une aubaine. C'est un don. C'est vraiment une... Euh, euh, elle, vient, elle, elle vient à point nommé. Promouvoir la, 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 la femme, protéger la femme et protéger l'enfant est la première priorité du gouvernement. Il y a même un ministère qui est érigé pour cela, en République centrafricaine. Mon ministère est le ministère de la Santé et de la Population. Donc c'est pour vous dire que l'importance que revêt ce partenariat pour nous, en République centrafricaine. Nous comptons beaucoup dessus, et vous pouvez compter sur moi en tant que ministre de la Santé, vous pouvez compter sur toute ma coopération, parce que nous allons utiliser ce partenariat comme le levier de notre action. Le deuxième point est vraiment rejoindre ma sœur du Tchad pour rendre un vibrant hommage aux premières dames que je connais très bien puisque je viens de l'ONU SIDA. Je, je vais maintenant répondre à vos questions. La première concerne les hommes. À l'ONU SIDA, d'où je viens, c'est moi, je fais partie de ceux, sous l'impulsion du directeur exécutif, euh, M. Michel Sidivé, a initié, a initié une, euh, a engagé une grande initiative sur l'implication des hommes dans la lutte contre le SIDA. Et cette action était dans la perspective d'impliquer les hommes de façon générale dans la santé. Et pour moi, en retrouvant ce programme, je me suis dit, voilà, je suis, je suis très bien arrivé pour moi. C'est Dieu qui m'a donné cette occasion pour continuer mon action, que j'ai commencé à l'Olucida. Et ma contribution va être de mobiliser les hommes. Mobiliser les hommes pour eux-mêmes, parce que vous savez, le, le vrai problème qu'on voit aujourd'hui dans le problème d'infertilité est le miroir d'un problème plus grand au-delà de l'infertilité. Les hommes ne prennent pas soin de leur santé déjà. Ils ne prennent pas soin de leur santé déjà. Et, et c'est ça qui a un impact sur tout, même sur le sida. Il faut les mobiliser, il faut les sensibiliser pour qu'ils prennent soin de leur santé, non seulement en tant que personne, mais aussi pour qu'ils jouent leur rôle de leader, parce qu'ils sont leaders, pour qu'ils jouent leur rôle de, de parents, pour qu'ils jouent leur rôle de partenaire. Et c'est là que, dans la lutte contre la fertilité, ils ont un rôle à jouer. Donc, vous pouvez compter sur moi là-dessus. Et, 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 et on va en profiter avec Mme Brigitte Ouadera pour que cet aspect devienne un des piliers de notre partenariat. Concernant le cancer, le, 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 d'abord, merci beaucoup. Parce que, comme vous le savez, notre pays est en train de sortir, de s'efforcer pour sortir d'un grand conflit. Le système de santé est par terre. Est par terre. Et cet appui arrive dans ce contexte. Pour nous, ce partenariat vient contribuer à la revitalisation du système de santé. Et par rapport au cancer, le cancer était encore plus inexistant presque. Inexistant. On a un registre, euh, euh, on a un, un cancérologue qui vient d'être formé. Vous voyez et il y a tout à faire. On doit développer un programme contre le cancer. Donc ce partenariat pour nous 
va nous permettre d'avoir un programme national sur le cancer, d'avoir les ressources, et nous comptons beaucoup sur vous pour vraiment avoir un programme comme celui-ci, parce que je suis persuadé qu'il y a beaucoup de femmes qui meurent de cancer. Euh, euh, on, a, on a à peu près 36%, euh, 000, euh, entre 2000 et 2012, on a recensé 2000, euh, 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 2015 cas de cancer, dont euh, 36% sont des cancers gynécologiques. Et, et, et donc la prise en charge est presque nulle. Donc vraiment, encore une fois, merci beaucoup et rendez-vous à Bangui pour que nous puissions continuer, porter la campagne à un niveau plus élevé. Je vous remercie. Thank you very, very much. We'll be there soon. <laughs> Now, uh, my question will go to uh, uh, Honorable Minister of uh, Health and of the Republic of the Gambia, uh, Hon Honorable Safi uh, Sisai. Uh, can you please tell us, of course, uh, I know that you are doing uh, with uh, Her Excellency First Lady a big campaign about infertility and also establishing a radio FM to raise awareness about health topics. And of course, Ministry of Health will have a role in that and also role of selecting the candidates who will be the trainee because without uh, the fertility specialist and the oncologist, oncologist in the country, uh, I mean, all this will not, uh, uh, of course, uh, be achieved. Uh, of course, I know that this will take time, at least one year, but after a year and then followed by a year and a year, you will have a very black platform of, of, of specialists and experts, and you don't need, you don't need any experts from uh, abroad. So uh, how can you will take this forward and, and, and uh, you know, identify the right candidates who are committed to make a difference and change the landscape of the healthcare in Gambia? Well, the question that you have raised regarding the issue of infertility in the Gambia is just the same thing that comes across all of Africa. The magnitude in which we see things might be different from country to country, but generally it's all the same. So uh, they suffer in silence as a result. And it is also a, a equally a taboo to link infertility to African men because as far as they are concerned, they're functional, everything is fine with them. And it goes beyond that. The lack of awareness of infertility and how it can be overcome or how it can be controlled runs a long way in our women's life. Some who suffer from that. But it hasn't come to the point where, like we've seen in that um, small um, film that was given out, where the husband has to cut his wife's yeah, hands off for not having a child. Or the extent of bringing a woman to your marital home because your wife hasn't conceived. We haven't gone to that stage. Even though there are women who suffer silently as a result of that. The same also goes for the treatment of cancer. There's all, almost a total absence of cancer facilities in the Gambia, almost a total absence. Besides the fact that uh, we've introduced this um, HPV vaccine, that's the human papilloma vaccine, which targets girls from nine years to 15 years, and uh, the screening of cervical cancer There's nothing, yeah. Sometimes people don't know they have the cancer until it goes to a stage which is very late. And there is no oncologist, or how many oncologists? No, no oncologist. There's none. Okay, so it will be a great opportunity to it's have for, yes, exactly, candidates for to oncology. have monk with us. Yeah. Yes, yes, we have a university. Yes. That turns out doctors. Yes, but, but no the specialties. It's very sophisticated. Yeah. yeah training. There's no speciality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just general doctors. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Medical doctors. Mm -hmm. So my coming in to collaborate with the Gambia will be a, a, an advantage to us. It's great. Yeah. yeah, because it will mean that the issue of cancers and infertility will be adequately addressed. Yes. And how, how easy do you see that identifying the candidates for the training? I mean, can, can it be done yes, quickly? Yes, it can or be done. Yes, yes, yes. It can be done because yes. we have already people who are qualified as medical doctors. Okay. Yes. So what you need to do is specialize okay. in so these special uh, areas. You will send me the list of the candidates as soon as you yes. come back. Great. As soon great. as we yes, do that, yes, yeah. Yes, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So we can start uh, our, our mission soon. Inshallah. Yes, yes inshallah. inshallah. <laughs> So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Finished. Thank you very, very much. And I'm sure that uh, we will be soon also making another history chapter in, in Gambia, along with the Ministry of Health and uh, your, your, your Excellency, His, Her Excellency, First Lady of Gambia. So uh, uh, my question will uh, go now to uh, 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 Deputy Minister uh, uh, of uh, Health of Namibia, 
uh, Honorable Julieta. And uh, I know that you joined uh, the campaign Merck More Than a Mother and also you were very active to send us the candidates for uh, oncology tra training, which is already two of them have joined, one in India and one in the University of Alexandria for three years uh, clinical um, uh, uh, oncology and uh, the other one for uh, uh, medical oncology training. So, and also the one candidate for fertility specialist. So uh, just tell us an idea, uh, of course, uh, you also have done great achievement for uh, uh, finding uh, the wonderful lady, Honorable uh, Margaret, the uh, uh, chairperson of the National Assembly of Namibia and a great example for women empowerment to be just champion of Merck More Than a Mother. So I want you to elaborate on that for our audience. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I have to thank Sandra because it was during a meeting of MEC uh, as a sales department that visited my ministry that I met uh, Sandra. Immediately she said no, uh, because when I started talking about the passion for us of issues of infertility, she recommended Russia. And after two emails, Russia, as you know, her energy and everything started working. And in no time, we have two, we met early this year. And by July, we have two students identified already for the scholarship. That was actually fast as possible. Um, and then the issue of the chairperson of the National Council as our ambassador is not the fact that our first lady doesn't want to become part and parcel of the initiative, but we believe in diversifying and our approaches towards what we want to achieve. So we say there is a number of first ladies as per Russia's discussion, no, the first lady of Chad, the first lady. Then we said, no, the Namibian way we have to look at another person who will bring a total different flavor within the discussions. And then we say that we need a legislator, somebody who will push the laws that we doesn't have in order for us to make an impact. So, and when the committee discussed the issue and recommended uh, Honorable Mensa Williams, she immediately just joined the, the, the crew and we started working on already launching, and, but unfortunately the launching could not take place. But for us, MEC Foundation and the More Than a Mother initiative, it's a holistic approach towards women's health. We look at it with a critical eye that we would like to advance women in general, their health in general. So uh, it's why I want to use Mark, the foundation, and the more than a mother, as a vehicle that will transform the concept of fertility, infertility in our community, and also the healthcare provision to women in our country in terms of access to oncological services, especially the screening, the, the treatment, at a very low level before it become a disease or curative, before it moved to the curative department. So the three things that my intervention will base on is basically the legislations, laws that we need to put in place. Because in every country we know if you do not have laws for human tissue, how do you get the sperms to be, to be stored or even to be implanted to another person? So we must make sure that all our laws, it's at par and it's, discuss, it's talking to the needs of the infertility and, and, and women's health. Then the primary intervention, I know that it's a long way to train oncologists, to train uh, 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 doctors uh, in fertility issues, to train a, bio, a embryologist, it's a long way. But there are things, that, the low fruits that we can catch hanging. The first one is uh, making sure that we integrate our services. When a young woman age 18 comes to a clinic for contraceptives, the first question that you have to ask, did you have a pap smear? It's not what we are doing. We do, somebody come for a contraceptive and we just give the injection or whatever and the patients go. Let us integrate these issues within our healthcare facilities so that we can give the, the, the comprehensive and a package to every young woman who is a potential to be infertility or to be, a, a, a be a, a, a getting cancer in one or another way. When we change our mind in that approach, I think we can make an impact. The other thing is that equip our health workers with information. I'm telling you that 
we registered nurses. I'm a registered nurse by profession, and that's my first degree. When somebody comes, we have so different information. What is infertility? What is the cause? Somebody will become judgmental, they will start discouraging people, and they will talk about, some of them are so Christian this day that they start praying immediately when you talk about infertility. I'm thinking that maybe we can have a comprehensive package of training our health workers on a consistent message on infertility and oncological problem that we can convey within our facility so that every health worker can speak the same language immediately. It doesn't need a lot of cost. It doesn't need HS to be trained. It's a cost maybe of a one week or something that what is infertility? What is the causes of infertility? How can we prevent infertility? So that's it, the second thing. Then this, the other thing that we can do is that there is nothing for people without people. If you think that you can succeed without involving the people that are affected, you are doomed to fail. So it's very important that we can coordinate our members in the communities, the patients, the clients that we are dealing with, and give them information on the various way of infertility. Let this project become a community-based project. Let it not end at the, uh, the, the speaker's office. Not, let it not end at the ministry's office. It should be able to go out to the people and they can have a voice and actually be more focal, vocal about this issue. Then the last one, the interventions. There are very cost-effective and easy interventions that we can deal with. While we are waiting for the sophisticated labs and whatever, let's start and work so much, do more with little what we are having. Let us not wait for Meg one day to come and put up a lab in Namibia. Let us try to encourage people to avoid A, B, C, D in order for them not to become infertile or to, uh, if there is a, 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 a surgical intervention that can be done, let us do this because IVF is the last resort. It's not the beginning of infertility. So let us make sure that we are actually helping our people. The last intervention actually that is a secondary intervention is what we are talking here about. The issue of the labs, the issue of training of, 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 of the medical personnel, the infrastructures, and very, very important, very secondary and very important is actually involving, I know health is a human right, we know that the Ministry of Health is a custodian of healthcare, but it's also very important that we cannot reach every corner. Let us utilize resources that is already on the ground in order to enhance and provide care for our people. Thank you very much. Wow, well, well said. It's great a strategy of implementation and execution, and actually we can take this forward to other countries with your uh, guidance and leadership. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Julieta. I know that you are gonna make it. After I, I called her the first time, the, in two weeks, I had everything I want sent to me, and we started, it was the fastest, actually, implementation ever. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I would like also to, uh, uh, give my uh, second question to uh, Honorable uh, Engelbert, uh, the Deputy Minister of Health of Tanzania. And uh, I, of course, I know that uh, we, uh, with Dr. Nicholas went to uh, meet uh, Her Excellency Vice President, uh, Dr. Samia, and she was very eager to be ambassador of Merck more than a mother, as also a woman who's been involved in many uh, uh, projects about women empowerment. She's also the UN ambassador for women empowerment. And uh, she wanted to invite us to launch the Merk Modena Mother in, uh, uh, in Tanzania, but she couldn't come this time because she has another engagement by the president, and she uh, actually delegate uh, yourself to, uh, to, to represent also her. So I would like to, uh, to know from you what you think about uh, the Merk Modena Mother and the oncology uh, training and, uh, you know, fellowship we are offering also for candidates from Tanzania, and how you will take this through through the Ministry of Health and Minister of Health. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the invitation. And uh, before I start, I would like to convey uh, the greetings from the Vice President of the uh, United Republic of Tanzania. She really wanted to, to be here, but uh, due to other uh, engagements, she asked me to represent her. So she passes on her, her greetings. I know you met her earlier this year. but. Uh, I would also to like to acknowledge the support of uh, Mac Foundation to Tanzania uh, through the, uh, the good work that uh, it's doing, uh, the training of, uh, uh, of uh, oncologists, uh, as the, 
on the video here, we saw uh, three uh, young Tanzanian uh, doctors being trained on the areas of, uh, areas of infertility. And uh, I think this is the kind of partnership that we are looking for, uh, the government and the, and the private sector. We have a very good uh, law and uh, policy on the public-private partnership. And I think this is one of the areas that to, uh, we encourage. So um, as, the gov as a representative of the government, uh, we do really appreciate uh, this kind of support. And uh, we, we, we pledge that uh, we are going to use uh, the, the newly trained uh, professions to, to, to spread the, uh, the knowledge and the skills that have learned uh, on the areas of oncology, infertility, and also uh, cardiology. And we, uh, as the government, uh, uh, we are keen. Uh, we are keen to make sure that uh, these services are made available to the greater majority of, uh, of people in, in Tanzania. And it's in line with our, our own policies that we, we are currently have. Right now, our focus is to make sure that uh, basic medical services and medicines are available to the people. But you also, in line with that, we want to reduce significantly number of reports abroad. So we're currently working on enhancing uh, cancer services, uh, in oncology services in Tanzania. Uh, one of the areas that we were working on is on the areas of training. We're training our local doctors, but also uh, make sure that uh, the facilities uh, in Tanzania are equipped with the state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, we are now installing the Linux machines at the one, uh, Ocean Road Cancer Institute. And uh, next year, we plan to, uh, to buy the PET scan uh, so that at least most of the Tanzanians are now able to access those services uh, locally. But you also are looking at to, to equip the other referral hospitals within the country to be able to, to provide chemotherapy uh, and uh, rad rad radiation therapy to, to patients. So all these are some of the initiatives that uh, we, we are putting in the country to ensure that we are cutting the number of patients that are going abroad, but also making the services available and accessible to the common people who are not able to travel abroad for, for these medical services. And uh, uh, lastly, I would like to assure you, uh, the, the, the Berg Foundation and you in person, that uh, the country is committed uh, under the stewardship of the, the Vice President and we in the Minister of Health to make sure that uh, this more, more than a mother uh, uh, initiative uh, is, is takes root in the country, and we utilize the, the, the well-trained uh, profession that we have in the country in order to, 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 to sow the seeds for further furtherance of these services in the country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and we are ready to uh, come to Tanzania very soon. So uh, uh, my question will go to President of uh, International Federation of Gynecologists and uh, Obstetrics, uh, FIGO. Uh, uh, Professor Burandari. So uh, uh, we met uh, first time in uh, India during the International Federation of Fertility Society uh, 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 World Summit. And uh, from that moment, you are already joining us and committed to two things. You told me also you are interested on gynecologist, uh, gynecology oncologist training and the other things, and also Merck More Than a Mother and uh, empowering, uh, you know, and improving access to fertility care. As we said, fertility is not only IVF, it's also fertility intervention, and simple intervention, which we can actually uh, uh, train many gynecologists to, to, to do it and to improve the landscape of fertility care across Africa and Asia. So I would like to know your views, uh, to share it with all the audience, uh, having been the president of the biggest uh, society uh, almost how many? 100 and, 130 country. So if you need anything, you go to Professor Brandari. He have access to all the countries across the world. <laughs> uh, thank you, Russia, for uh, inviting uh, Figo to be at this uh, panel. And uh, just to give you uh, one line on what Figo is, Figo is the International Federation of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. And uh, we have 130 societies which are members of FIGO. Egypt is one of them, UK is another, USA, India, these are all countries which are part of uh, FIGO's uh, gynecology and obstetrician. Um, 
when, when, well, when I look at the whole perspective regarding various countries that we need to look into and going into, I think we need to strengthen the on-the-ground obstetricians and gynecologists. Unless we strengthen them, we are not going to deliver the whatever that we need to do because we won't have the infrastructure, uh, the personnel who are obstetrician gynecologists who we need to, for infertility treatment, whether it is oncology or whatever that needs to be done. We need to strengthen them and that is something which uh, FIGO is committed to and we are looking for partners who would help us to strengthen these obstetricians and gynecologists in various countries. Talking of uh, the cancer cervix, um, which is one of the major issues as far as all the African countries are concerned and uh, the late diagnosis and so on. And um, uh, the loss of life as far as cancer cervix is concerned is unacceptable because it is a preventable disease. And we have vaccination available by which you can prevent the disease. And it's time that um, we start off with all the ministers and first ladies that are here, make sure that we start from the schools to make sure that the 9, 10, 11 year girls are vaccinated so that we prevent the HPV um, uh, infection to make sure that cancer cervix does not occur. We have been able to reduce maternal mortality in a large scale in all over the world, barring few countries. Most of the places we have been able to reduce the maternal mortality. But we are going to lose all those mothers saved by uh, reducing maternal mortality dying from cancer cervix unless we really look, look at it as a holistic manner that we have to look at the women's health and uh, reproductive rights as their fundamental right for women. And unless we support all that, it's not going to happen as a holistic measure that um, we need to uh, uh, do. Talking about the infertility in IVF, and uh, uh, I felt very elated when somebody in the last panel said that IVF is not end all of everything. Fertility treatment, there are a lot of things that need to be looked into before IVF is the last resort. There are so many things that we need to general advice to a couple itself may solve the problem of infertility in many of the couples. So that is something which we near really need to look at and not think about the hi-fi IVF for each and every country that uh, need maybe one center is good enough for those which cannot be treated by other methodologies and which is something which is very, very important um, uh, uh, that needs to be done. We have been working on a fistula project in uh, the African countries, training uh, doctors to do fistula surgeries, and not even that. Now today we have uh, affiliation with FIGO so that any patient who is needing fistula surgery, the entire kit is given free by FIGO for them to be operated in various countries that uh, we need to do. And then the 10 committees and working groups that we have, uh, we are in the process of starting center of excellences uh, from FIGO all over the world in various, like in infertility, in everywhere, so that uh, people can come there and get trained and they will be FIGO certified, uh, recognized centers which will give a FIGO certification at the end of it that they have been trained and uh, working on it um, in, in those um, um, particular areas. And um, with um, a Mark for Mothers which you've been doing superb work and I, I must congratulate you Russia uh, uh, from all angles it's not only infertility oncology for everywhere the holistic for women's health the way uh, you have put in your effort uh, they are commendable and uh, I can assure you FIGO will be 100% behind you for whatever that you Thank need you. Uh, you're welcome to just talk to us and we will make sure that we will be available for you for that. Thank you very much. You, thank you very, very much. And I assure you, I will coordinate all this to you. So we can see also for regarding the FISLA uh, free uh, kit for training, for treatment, for all these things. And we will make a very big network and we will be partner, long-term partner, definitely. <laughs> so uh, my question will go to uh, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Vice Chancellor of Maharashtra University, uh, Professor uh, Dilip. Uh, we met uh, two years ago and um, we started our partnership uh, and we are doing a lot of training in India in your uh, uh, universities, across your universities, oncology and we're doing diabetes and we're sending doctors from Africa 
to uh, train to be trained as a fellowship oncology fellowship in uh, Tata Memorial Hospital and the your universities so it will be great of course that you can uh, elaborate on our partnership and how the role of India academia and Asian academia knowing that we have African Asian uh, luminary today can contribute definitely and very significantly to building uh, uh, capacity and healthcare capacity in Africa. Yes, thank you, Russia. Uh, already the, you know that the Maharashtra University of Health Science started MOU with you. And really we are promoting all the trainees for that. We too are your thank you to Russia that he has already, she has already taken a part in diabetes, hypertension, then oncology and everything. And we have got this MOU about training also. I had a word with uh, Dr. Kailash also about the Tata Memorial and he has given because with them also we have got the understanding about the training person and you must have got the data that almost up till now six nurses from different African countries, Sub-Saharan Asia, they have been trained already. Then five you need oncologists has also been trained from them and we see too in the future also from our side also the faculty is what you will be promoting that will, they will be also trained and their services will be also provided in the exchange program also. And the best thing is that ki you are also promoting in the other part of the student undergraduate postgraduate also about this arousal, about the all the various factors which you are taking under care. And it's a very good that the, the Maharashtra University of Health Science will continue to have promote this MOU. Thank you very much. And I think all this August gathering will agree that the Russia has taken every part in every aspect. She needs an applause for this. Thank you very much. Very much. It's really a very valuable partnership, and I believe very much in the role of India to uh, contribute to Africa. And the partnership between Asia and Africa is uh, undeniable. Um, I would uh, like to uh, uh, give my question now to uh, Vice, Ch Vice President of Africa Fertility Society, uh, Professor uh, James Ulalulalopu. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, he will tell you also about the International Federation of Fertility Societies uh, meeting. Summit will be in Uganda and Kampala. And uh, his role also for the training of embryologists, because embryologists and fertility specialists, because I believe this is the key, the key factor to change the fertility care landscape in Africa, is having these people, having this representative, have, having these experts across uh, Africa to raise awareness, prevention, management, and everything. Uh, thank you, Russia. And may I also thank fellow panelists for the input they have made uh, this morning. And I would like to have about three points to summarize the panel discussion this morning. First of all, on behalf of the African Fertility Society, we have worked hard over the last two years or so to put the African voice out in the global stage to put the voice of uh, African women out within the region itself, and then to have this embedded within the national structures, the national government and healthcare systems. And I think we will continue to do that collaboratively with our partners, Mark Foundation, the Inter International Federation of Fertility Society, and the WHO. And moving beyond today's and this conference, we will be holding collaborative meeting in Kampala in March uh, 2018, uh, working collaboratively with the International Federation of Fertility Society, my own society, the African Fertility Society, and the parent Uganda Fertility Society. So all of you are welcome to that meeting. And now let me address issues specific to provision of um, care, access, and capacity building. And I want to compliment my fellow uh, panelists for going through what um, they are able to do in their own countries and their plans for the future. And I want to compliment that from the point of view that implementation process needs auditing and evaluation. And that will generate data and research to be able to measure the amount of success one is undertaking and going forward. And I think in that regard, 
we would then be able to be able to evaluate how much money we are putting into the project, how much training we are putting into the project, and how much advocacy is needed so that we can be able to involve a multi-stakeholder engagement into the project. Now, let me address specifically the issue of embryology. Embryology is dear to the heart of and central to the delivery of IVF services because the embryologist is the only person who can answer that fundamental question, are these gametes, the sperm and egg, adequate and satisfactory? Has fertilization taken place, yes or no? Can we transfer this embryo into the woman or store them? The only person who can be able to answer those key fundamental questions is the embryologist. In that regard, the training, Nicholas and his team plus all those who are going to have further training via uh, um, uh, Mark and the uh, American Society for Reproductive Medicine is going to complement and enhance this input. And it, oh, the beneficiary is going to be <clears throat> reducing barrier to treatment, enhancing uh, capacity at the national level. Thank you very much.